So uh, why am I picking on Internet Explorer as opposed to other browsers? Uh, well, um, through no fault of its own, uh, it's a target of opportunity. Uh, Windows is, is on you know, the, the most predominant operating system uh, on the network today. Uh, the default browser is Internet Explorer. It's installed by default. Uh, it is, uh, we're going to show here that uh, Internet Explorer is made up of components that are shared by other applications on the operating system, other applications uh, that are installed. Um, and uh, if you've ever tried to remove Internet Explorer, I, I don't think there's any uh, fundamentally safe uh, or complete way to do that. Um, also, another point I'm going to try to make is the complexity of Internet Explorer. Uh, it's tightly integrated with the operating system. There are a rich set of features. Uh, there are components. They are callable via APIs. Other programs, uh, non-Microsoft programs, can use the bits of Internet Explorer. Uh, other applications that are par uh, part of Windows or other Microsoft applications make use of them. Um, developers can do all sorts of things with the, with the bits of the browser uh, to make their own browser within their application. Uh, there's a, uh, uh, what, what is a nice feature sometimes for an end user is to try to predict what the end user means, what their intentions are. So when I click on this button or click on a URL, well, that URL says open a certain type of file, but what did the user really mean? Uh, and uh, Internet Explorer uh, takes some steps to, to try to predict maybe what the user really was thinking instead of what action they took. Uh, so interesting features in Internet Explorer. Uh, there are a set of security zones, uh, the Internet zone, Trusted Sites Zone, Local Machine Zone, uh, Intranet Zone. Uh, these are security zones that uh, the policies and the behaviors allowed in each of these zones are kept, uh, are intended to be kept separate. Um, HTML Help, uh, this is a Windows system. Uh, Internet Explorer is used to render parts of HTML Help, and there's a tight integration between HTML Help and uh, the browser components. Uh, Microsoft's uh, dynamic HTML uh, system uh, includes some proprietary um, objects and methods, which there's really no, no fault in doing that. But again, it adds somewhat to the complexity and the, the uh, level of uh, programmability that the system has. Uh, the object element is, is of particular uh, interest. There's been a number of vulnerabilities tied to the uh, behavior of the object element. Uh, HTML applications are uh, composed of HTML, a script, various things you find in a web page. Uh, except they are given a very high level of trust and privilege. Uh, when they're executed, they're essentially like running an executable file uh, on your machine. A lot, of HTML, a lot of HTML is stored locally on the file system. Uh, there are times when this HTML uh, takes information off the, off the network and uses it, or reuses it. Um, Internet Explorer tries to uh, figure out what to do with certain types of files. This gets back to the intention of the user point. Uh, determining the MIME type of a file. And there are a number, a number of protocol handlers. Uh, so HTTP colon slash slash is a very common protocol we see all the time. Uh, Internet Explorer implements, or more accurately, Windows, the Windows system implements a number of URL monikers that, uh, that create different protocol handlers to handle different types of URLs and different files differently. Um, a lot of the evidence, a lot of what we've seen in, in the vulnerabilities that have come out in Internet Explorer seem to indicate design decisions uh, that chose uh, interoperability uh, and features uh, over security. Uh, a brief list of some of the uh, vulnerabilities that, uh, that we've dealt with uh, in IE. Uh, a big one that I'm going to focus on today, cross-domain or cross-zone vulnerabilities. Talked about the security zones. Um, they are a fine idea to separate uh, privileges and the actions different web pages can take uh, in implementation. The checks are not always performed uh, adequately, and there's a lot of ways to cross the zones. <coughs> HTML help, ActiveX, the whole presentation unto itself, which I'm not going to get into today. Uh, and I'll mention kill bits in the end, setting the kill bits, which turns off an ActiveX control. Uh, MIME type determination we're going to talk about today. Uh, URL monikers. Uh, HTML that's, that's uh, Microsoft specific. Uh, again, nothing, it's not really a vulnerability, but the, the complexity of it and the additional uh, objects and methods. Um, just the, the complexity breeds insecurity, which is the point I'm going to make. Um, there's a lot of control over the, the graphical user interface, the GUI, the title bar, the address bar, the status bar. Uh, 
opening windows that cover the entire screen, opening windows off screen, uh, changing the address bar, changing the status bar. Uh, these are not necessarily vulnerabilities, but they greatly uh, improve an attacker's ability to spoof, uh, spoof the screen, spoof the address, uh, fool the user into what's really going on. I'm going to talk about MIME type determination, and this is really a borderline case. Um, I'm going to label it a vulnerability in the sense that it violates uh, an implied policy. Uh, in my example, if I click on a URL and I clearly see uh, in the status bar, for instance, that it ends in .jpg, I believe I'm getting an image file. Uh, however, Internet Explorer uh, wants to be uh, helpful and uh, try to figure out what I really meant by clicking on that image file. So while the user may think I want to view an image, uh, Internet Explorer is going to try something else, uh, as we'll see next. So IE wants to know, how do I handle this file? Uh, I can handle it internally, I can view the image, I could parse the HTML with the MHTML component, uh, I can prompt for download, or, or save, or run, uh, or I could automatically run an external program, uh, Acrobat Reader, or a plugin, something like that. What it turns out Internet Explorer will do in most cases, it will read into the file, it will download all or part of it and read into it, and uh, try to match the contents of the file to, uh, to a list of known file types, known MIME types. If it finds a match, it's done thinking and it says, that file is what I matched it to, it returns that to the browser, and the browser then takes the appropriate action. Uh, if IE is unable to make a match when it reads into the file, it might look at the uh, HTTP content type header, and it also might use the file extension, uh, which a lot of Windows users are familiar with. Uh, people think, you know, JPEG, .jpg means something, .exe means something. So, uh, as we see here, it's gonna, this is going to fool the user a little bit. Uh, so, uh, an example URL uh, ending the file with a JPG extension. Um, Sure, you know, I think that's, a, that's an image. I've, I've clicked on JPGs in the past. Uh, it's an image. Um, in fact, in this case, the JPG file is actually going to be an HTML file with some exploit script in it. I click on the link thinking I'm getting an image. It's going to show in the browser. IE, on my behalf, thinks, well, maybe you didn't just want to view an image. Uh, I'll read it in the file and check it out for you. It finds HTML inside there. It says this is an HTML file. I'm going to hand it off to the parser, and it will then display HTML or run the script appropriately. Uh, a lot of the attacks, a lot of the cross-domain attacks, uh, an attacker can further their chances of being successful by, instead of pointing URLs to uh, malicious HTML files, they can point to a file ending in anything else they want, JPG, GIF, anything whatsoever, uh, which might encourage a user uh, even more to click on the link uh, and run the attacker's code. And Windows Media Player is involved from time to time. Again, there are uh, 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 Microsoft media formats which can contain URLs and scripting even, and these can be used sometimes to cross zones and to uh, affect other attacks. So I'm going to focus uh, first on cross-domain and zone vulnerabilities. So uh, these are vulnerabilities that allow code from one domain to execute in the context of a different domain. Domains can be in different zones uh, in Internet Explorer parlance. <laughs> so in this case, attacker.com might be in the Internet zone and by default. And since I use uh, my online bank, my online banking site, mybank.com, might be in my trusted sites zone. There's a, uh, a special zone, the local machine zone, which represents the, the local uh, Windows operating system. Uh, and it covers the entire file system, with the exception of browser cache. Uh, and this zone has greatly, uh, uh, greatly increasing privileges. It really extends the trust boundary of what script or web uh, site code can do. Uh, the common attacks that we see try to do cross zone scripting. They'll try to get from the internet zone and run script in the local machine zone. Uh, and these are the most dangerous types of attacks that we've seen. So, what are the impacts of these vulnerabilities? Uh, being able to run script or to uh, run code in the local machine zone almost always means being able to take any 